What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a bit of a different video, a discussion of sorts on the state of PC gaming in 2023 which is a video I've been considering making for a few months as something that has been becoming more of an issue lately is that many games seem to be launching into their worst state on PC as opposed to consoles. Now, naturally, that gives me quite a bit to talk about, so I will try to timestamp this accordingly so you can jump around a little bit as there's a decent amount of things I need to discuss here. First and foremost, this is primarily a PC gaming channel, though that is more about convenience than anything else. PC gaming is just my preferred platform because that is where all of my editing and work etc already happens so that hardware is in a really good spot so it makes sense for me to game there as well and you combine that with all of my muscle memory being for keyboard and mouse and it's just become my personal preference. So with that in mind I'm not really a platform wars let's call it kind of person. Truth be told I think for the average person consoles hold much more value if all you're interested in is gaming. Now a PC can do a lot more things than game, but if you're not interested in those other things, then high-end PC gaming is frankly overspending for you which is part of what we're going to get into here. But I just want to start this video by being clear that my own personal stance on consoles versus PC, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, is simply that you should play on whatever you prefer. I do not care. I think all the battles for exclusivity lately have made that more annoying than it should be. But with that in mind, I do also think that, again, if gaming is all you care about, consoles are really the way to go right now, which I think is largely down to two things. The quality of the releases, not in terms of exclusives, whatever, I mean the actual technical quality of the same product, which is then combined with the much lower costs of a console. And as we go in and discuss these things, we're also going to be going over why I think the state of PC gaming in comparison is in such a rough place in 2023, unless you're at the very high end of hardware and you're willing to eat those costs to have a PC. Towards the beginning here, I just want to state very clearly that I think the current state of PC gaming in 2023 is not great. The price of PC parts is very high, the state of the games released is generally much poorer than their console companions, outside of some rare instances where the reverse is true. But let's talk about the games in particular. Why is it that games are releasing on PC in a worse state overall than, say, on a console, it would seem? Well, this can come down to a variety of reasons, but very broadly speaking, the first and simplest explanation is the hardware for which it is made. You see, a console uses one set of hardware. You don't have to worry about the roughly 600 something I believe graphics cards that are currently tracked in terms of performance generally or all of the other varying things that those individual cards can be paired with in a PC to create the unique hardware a person might be using. It is much easier to optimize for one set of hardware say in an Xbox or a PlayStation or even the Switch than it is to account for all of the variations in a PC which is a pretty straightforward idea I would say for most people to wrap their heads around but another aspect of it, I think, or at least in terms of common problems that we tend to see over and over, is the homogenization, so to speak, of game engines, which can lead to you seeing, again, the same problem repeated over and over again across games because they're using the same engine that that problem is intrinsic to. Now, this used to be slightly less of a thing, not so much that the problems were, but rather the same problem over and over again, because once upon a time, many studios had their own proprietary game engine. However, it's simply very expensive to make and maintain a game engine, which is effectively a suite of software, and this has led to a sort of outsourcing to very common engines that are then licensed out to other companies to use to make their games, which is the case with things like Unreal Engine, Unity, etc. And as this shift continues and we see more and more games made with these same engines, it becomes easier at the same time for consumers to spot the weak points. For instance, a very common one that we see in a lot of releases here lately is stuttering on PC games, which is usually the result of the Unreal Engine and has to do with how it compiles all of the shaders and when it chooses to do so. Now recently we've seen some games starting to get around this by front loading all of the shaders right at the beginning of the game, at the menus. So while these issues can seem incredibly commonplace because of this sort of engine homogenization, at the same time we are seeing devs start to take steps to fix these common issues, 
But all of that leads to an especially bad time on PC, again, where the variation in hardware is so substantial that it is impossible to account for all of it. On the flip side, these things do usually get ironed out after the fact. Once they've released the game out there to potentially millions, they know where the weak points are, they can eventually get them shored up to where it's a pretty good experience across the board. But by that point, it is typically too late. And you compare that experience to a console version of game where they were able to tailor it to that hardware and discounting some genres that just don't really work on say a console or PC or vice versa and you've got what is likely to be a better experience from the get-go. And while you might be able to make up the difference for that with really high-end PC hardware, you are then faced with the other issue, which is, quite frankly, PC prices these days are pretty outrageous. Even the reasonable stuff is probably going to set you back a few grand, and unless you are just, again, someone like myself who uses a PC for work and editing, etc., there's just no way to justify that cost in comparison to just buying a console. Because for the price of one high-end GPU, you could buy several consoles, usually to the tune of two or three. And even if you go on the lower end, a nice graphics card will again give you the price of a single entire console, which makes putting together a gaming PC these days very expensive. And then you combine that with other real world factors, and gaming on console becomes just a no-brainer for most people. And some of that comes down to the very different markets between PC and consoles. For instance, most console sales happen at a loss. The companies typically take a loss on the console hardware. However, in taking that loss and getting you onto their platform, they then make that money back and then some by selling you the games, etc., and basically getting yourself into their ecosystem. And you compare that to the PC world where it's just very different. Graphics cards can be used for a lot more than gaming, as well as can the entire PC, and thus the pricing is not centered around just video games, even if that is a common application. Which brings us to the end of the video, really, which is the rather disappointing conclusion that between the state of releases on PC, especially in terms of bigger releases, and just the sheer cost of it, unless you want to be on PC to play indie titles that are not nearly as graphically demanded, Ending, then you've put people into a position where even if they want to game on PC, it might just simply be out of their reach. But on the flip side of that, the sort of silver lining there is that, luckily, PC gaming is not down to just these big blockbuster titles, and many times indies that are developed and used specifically on PC come out and they tend to be great experiences, which then have the sort of reverse problem where they then go to consoles and tend to be in pretty rough shape over there, which is common of my favorite favorite genre CRPGs. So there is a little back and forth there. But I think right now, in 2023, at least at the beginning of it here, PC gaming is a little unattractive on the whole, especially if you're just trying to get into it now. And as a result of all this, I think PC gaming in particular, while it certainly isn't going anywhere, I think might have a rough year or two ahead of it in terms of problems and waiting for them to be resolved. And ultimately, we'll just have to see how it pans out. But this is hardly the first time PC gaming has been in a bit of a slump. It's one of those things where it just has its ups and its downs, and PC gaming will always have its sort of dedicated audience that is going to be there regardless. So as we move forward, quite frankly, in 2023, I'm expecting more problems like this to crop up. Optimization issues, hardware problems, just all that kind of thing. I think that's going to continue for a little while, but I'm hoping as that continues and we see more and more games made in these engines that we start to see a lot of these problems shored up before we get to release. And ultimately, I think this is just a bit of a cyclical problem. I think this will always be a problem to some degree. However, it's just very apparent right now, which is why I decided to make this video about it. But by all means, let me know how you feel about the issue down below. What are some of your thoughts? As I personally hardly claim to know everything about the subject and there are always fringe cases and outliers, and this video is much more of a generalization. So with all of that said, by all means, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.